the garden. Potatoes are coming back up again for our second crop. Tomatoes looking good. The raspberries are coming in. I don't see anybody. Oh, I do see some raspberries on here, but they're starting to come in. And our asparagus is coming in over there. So the plan is to get rid of this very permeable garden here and replace it with a fully enclosed, I'm gonna do a, um, a 96 inch, what's that? Eight foot by 144 inch, 12 foot sides. And um, have it so that the deer can't come in and we can get a head start on our growing season. Okay, so the grass, the ground, the grass, the ground is still frozen. And so I'm going to have to dig about six, seven inches down, which is about the height of this, maybe eight or nine. And then um, gut it out to here, at least here. And then cover it, gravel it, and anchor it. So we're gonna put these in at 24 inches, every 24 inches, so I should have seven boards going up and down here. What's going on? Uh-huh. I can't work like this. Thank you. Ugh. Love is messy. Got these three inch nails. Dicks. Being a big help again. Okay, so there's the one 12 foot wall. And the eight will go between here and here, just to that right there on the other side of that. I gotta retain all that with some more dirt and rocks down there. I think I'm gonna put the front door on that side. Have this the back. This vent's really good because of the breeze. But we're getting there. The stain's looking much better than the normal raw, untreated wood.
chopping through this ground with its three inches of permafrost, <laughs> making this difficult. I gotta take these fence posts out of here. I got one out. I probably should have better did a did a much better job of leveling off the ground. Once I get everything leveled off and squared, we can get these walls together and then things should go easier. Okay, a note here. Um, because I uh, almost, oops, let's do this. I made this mistake is you have to have an overhang here. So I made this 96 inches, of course, by 144. So I get 12 footers, eight footers, everything would fit. So there's a four inch overhang. So that'll hook into here. And, um, you got to put a second stud down here because these sections, again, these are four by eights, these sheets here. And again, if you find something rolled, you don't need to do this, this extra board, but you can see how the, the two 48 inch sections stop there. So I'm going to have to cut one more piece out here, overlap it by four inches, and that's that'll be that. But that's something, that's why you see this extra, why has he got two studs down that point? That's why. Okay. Um, stopped snowing and it melted, so we're back at it. We actually got two sides up. I'll put this third wall in. Get all straightened out and hopefully give me some I feel like I got something accomplished here. This is the winter that doesn't want to let spring come in. Um here's my greenhouse <laughs> all over the place. <laughs> I don't think I'm gonna ever finish this damn thing. So the problem is the ground's frozen and I have to keep on digging and these rocks in there are making it hard, but I'll see how much snow I get today, but no greenhouse yet. Okay, all three walls are up. Now we just gotta put the front wall up, but it's stable. Okay, so I got the first, the first um, section up, and it's only tied in a few screws here and here. So the key will be getting the second section in here, and then adding the connectors here to there, and then have it just secure by itself. So stable for now, and it's a decent start. Everything square.
rest it up here. Just lean right against it, right? Yeah. Okay, good. You can hold that there, you good? Yeah. Okay. You still good? Yeah. The truss is all up. Fattens at the end, but overall, that's not a bad cut. Use that for some kind of facade later. That'll give it enough of an angle so that it'll drip down, and then I'll put a, like I said, a groove into here. If you don't cut this with a knife, sometimes you get these little particles in these grooves. So I blow it out. Okay, so as I often do, and I think I'm being all fancy, I'm beveling this down and beveling that down to match. So when I put everything together, it looks like it fits just fine. Seams go good there and there, but I have to turn these boards 
sideways, up and down. So, I do this all the time. I gotta undo stuff. This is why I screw everything in. Flip it upside down so that I can come through to secure these boards. And then if I wanna throw in a two by four in there, you can finish off the four by four, whatever look. But that was a bad one. I gotta do this one and take that one out. But this is why I use screws, not nails. <laughs> Anyways, that's where we are now. Um, this is not the first screw up, but one I thought I'd point out. Um, the other thing is, I think I mentioned that it should, you can see the groove under there. That should, the water should roll down because I have this at an angle. Come down here, we'll fill up this groove. I might have to make it wider and then it should just drip down and stay off of here. Even though that's all meant for the, the weather. It's starting to be spring around here, and the natives are getting restless. What is your big butt doing in the way? These are just one by threes. I picked up a Home Depot for like two bucks a piece. They're pretty cheap. Just stain it and uh, they work well. He's got to find the straight ones. So every time I go, I find four or five really good straight ones out of the box of like a hundred or whatever. And I just buy them knowing damn well I'm going to need them one day. And now they're paying off. Two sandhill cranes. Hope the camera picked that up. That's cool. I saw them dive bomb about a week ago. I was hoping they were going to nest down the lake. I love this place. We had a bald eagle fly through the other day below the tree line. You hear his wings, unlike my local gray horned owl. Silent as they come. Hey, I get there too with the ladder. Get that ridge cap put on when it's maybe not so wet. I don't want to slip. I'm too old to be falling. I don't heal as fast. All right. Went a little too deep with that last one. So we're going to have to do. This is really disgusting, Homer. Jeez. 
Try to keep all the hill hill holes. The same. Hey. Last but very much not least. Rope it down. Hang it up. Last rafter, homie. What do you think? Not very impressed? <laughs> you just want the ball, don't you? Yeah, I gotta build the inside, but so far so good. We're enclosed. We're pretty dry. Gotta get that last ridge cap on. It'll look nice with the lights on later. Yeah, what do you want? Henry's the only smart one. He's inside dry. And if you put some lights inside there, these rivets really make some cool, fun to see us at night, demarcations in here. Our solo for our fan runs down this wire to that panel. The other one for the lights runs back there. And that's what we're looking like with the lights right now. Lots well, of work to do on the inside, but it's fun. At least now I can be out of the rain. Okay, so we're gonna go on to building this little window real quick here. Pretty easy, 28 and a half up and down by a little longer on the sides. I'm gonna just put some brackets there so we can open this way, a little pulley system, some rope pull it that way or something. We'll figure it out. Or maybe I have it come down. I don't know yet. But I found some pallet wood. There's a Murdox here that gives you free pallet wood. And I split them in half. So all I'm doing is taking one of those guardrail bottom pallet. And these are really nice wood. It's light. It's, it's, I mean, it's dry as shit. Split this in half. And you've got your ridge to stick the probably propylene in there. And you can glue it in or tap it in with small nails. But this is really light, and once you um, plane it, you can get a nice little grain in here. We'll also uh, stain it as well. So I just ripped this board in half, and um, we'll go from there. And we'll have the four pieces. For anybody who doesn't know what this saw is, it's a Japanese saw, which, man, I love. It's got a little bamboo handle. I get into areas, it's got flex to it. I get into more areas like this. I didn't know what I was gonna use it for. I thought this would be a cool thing to have one day. I might need it. I use it all the time. Highly recommend this bad boy. Okay, let's make our life a little easier today, huh, Henry? Go here first. Oh boy, here first. 
Okay, less lickings. Guys, special. in the first place. Henry, all right, you, you just protect me from myself. I hear you. Okay, buddy, buddy. <laughs> all right, let's go work on something different. I don't want to screw it up so easy. Come on. Let's go back to lifting big rocks and sticks and stuff, huh? You guys are no help, are you? Oh, you got moly, is this thing solid? Yep, that nice slice of my finger that is opened up. Maybe you want to put a pair of gloves on. Oh, this is why you should just take your time, put some stupid gloves on, because now I gotta go in and clean the stupid things so I don't get infected. Right, Henry? Okay. So the, just cut this piece out right here, last panel of polycarbonate, or last half panel. And the whole goal of this place was to maximize all the sheets. So I have just the door here to do, and I'm gonna make a Dutch door, I believe, and this will be solid. So this will all be lit up. And all I have left is these sheets right here. So however they fit, I'm just gonna make them work. I'll make it designed Almost like it looks like it was done on purpose, but I'm gonna have very little. That's probably the last thing I'll have left over from all these four by eight sheets. The same thing goes with um, the one dilemma I have right now is these T111 sheets here are, are um, four by eights as well. Of course, you build a house that's four by 
I mean, sorry, eight by 12 or greenhouse. And you think everything's just gonna be perfectly fitting, but it didn't because you have overlaps. Like where the, if you want these pieces to come, you have to overlap them. And so you lose a little. So I came all the way to there. I have like one or two panels left. So it isn't enough. So I'm gonna have to come up with something creative here because I'm not gonna go down and spend, well, maybe I will. I don't know, I get one more four by eight sheet. I could also finish off the bottom there and sturdy it up by putting them back back to each other so it'd be double the width. So I guess that wouldn't be such a waste, but most of everything here, these are all um, eight footers, eight footers and 12 footers. The only 14 footers you'll need to get are these long boards so that you could over shoot them by a few inches here. So that's the, that was the whole goal is maximizing this, the, the consumables here so there's no waste whatsoever very little waste it's just more like a game to me than anything else but i do like having no waste and i'm very happy because the polycarbonate is not cheap you know it definitely ain't cheap it's the most expensive part of this thing but check back in when we're all done gotta still do the floor gotta finish doing this shelf but we're getting closer hinge this one note here i i thought i had for plastic this is just a wood bit it's nothing special so if you think you have to go run down to whatever store you buy your bits at this uh polyurethane cuts pretty easily um i want to smooth off an edge or two there um with the normal wood bit i'd still probably do way better with the plastic bit the right tools but between these two things i found they work the best found these screws work really good because they have a little gasket on a washer to hold them down. You obviously got to be sensitive with the drill here, but they are ever built one inch number 10. So if you're looking for what we're using here, this is what I have left here. Let me widen this. This is all this is what I got to figure out to fill out the bottom, which is here. But this stuff isn't cheap. This is probably the most expensive part of the greenhouse. It's about a hundred bucks a four by eight sheet, depending on where you look. Um, this is six mil, you can get the eight. Um, any other questions about any kind of, uh, these are great for, 
for it. Um, digging in to these corners that you don't want to show. I mean, you can always countersink them with this, but makes it easier. These obviously are great for the support. Three inches at least. You need some three inches. Um, we had a few more different options for different things, but so far that's what's going on right now. We're we've got some. Uh, I don't know what she said here. Swish something. We got yarrow. I don't know what these are. I don't know what those are. I don't know what these are. Oh, here we go. I need to teach my wife how to spot beef stock. Cilantro, St. John's wort, ensign, the echinacea, I guess. Echinacea, we got some zucchini in here. We got some white beans. And all the other stuff is out and in here. Um, we were doing some gallon milk jugs here to get some light on those um, and out of the way of everything else. So, um, cabbage, because our dogs, my uh, big guy eats cabbage, supplement his meal because I don't want him getting too big. He's 11, he's, a, he's 130 pounds, so we get him down to about 120 now, maybe even less. So in the interest of saving time, I'm just gonna cut this here and post it, but we have a lot more work to do. We have to put a floor in, I have to gravel the sides. Um, we have to fortify the um, hydroponic system inside, which I'm going to get going and create a better solar system um, with uh, a few hundred watt panels and, and a battery store. So while we're gone, we can have a drip system in place and use the place more efficiently. Overall, I'm happy with how it turned out. If there's any questions you have, it's a pretty easy build. It just takes some effort um, and some persistence. If you're not a builder like me, I'm sure people who are used to this will wrap this up pretty quickly. But it's also a fun project, so comment, leave any questions you have. I promise to um, do my best to get back to each one of those. Thanks so much.